What is going on, everybody? I'm Noah from Phonog.com. No, we're not at the World Cup. We're at the uh, launch event for the Droid X, the new Verizon, Motorola, Google, uh, and Adobe's here too, smartphone, just introduced uh, at a press conference. Be available July 15th on Verizon for 200 bucks. Uh, we're going to go full in-depth unboxing all that stuff later. But I'm actually here with some folks from Adobe who are showing off kind of a sneak peek of Flash Player. Uh, Flash Player will be available later this summer because it requires uh, Froyo Android 2.2, which will be available later this summer on the Droid X as well as on other devices. But we're getting a little sneak peek of what Flash Player on Droid X will look like. So I'm here with Paul from Adobe who's going to walk us through uh, a little bit. Again, this is a sneak peek, not final, can't get it just yet, but uh, pretty cool to see. So here's an example of a, a typical casual game you'd find out on the web through Congregate site, where they aggregated a number of games across the community, and they published them. Here's a sample game called Pinch Hitter. It's all done in Flash. And so the game immediately goes into full screen mode, and I'll, I'll rotate it so you can see the full landscape view play button. And so the pitcher will throw a ball and as the batter I'll take a swing, foul ball. You can hear how the whole experience comes together. The performance is really good. You can hear the sound effects. So the the target overlay there, I'm not familiar with the uh, people who follow the site know I'm not a big baseball guy, so I'm not familiar with the game. Uh, is that overlay specific to the mobile version or is that? Uh, I don't believe it is, no. Okay. It is simply just putting you a, a little batting zone in there for you as the, gotcha. the, the hitter. Okay. Are there specific, I know one of the things with Flash on mobile devices, you know, touchscreen devices, is that, um, you know, a lot of the Flash games I've played online, you use your mouse or you use your keyboard or what yes. have you to control things. So how's that going to translate to the touchscreen experience? So you can see right here that I'm already using uh, native touchscreen capabilities uh, to swing my bat. I can double tap and uh, scroll around, change the form factor, switch back to full screen. So we've taken the time to integrate the gestures and the native capabilities of the device with Flash so it understands the full range of touch events and okay. have a custom experience. Gotcha. Uh, from a developer standpoint, and I know this isn't a developer's event, so forgive me for kind of, but from a developer standpoint, if, if I'm creating a Flash game for the web, but I also want to make sure it runs well on, a, on the Droid X, are there, you know, are there sort of a, a, a separate set of uh, controls or developer tools or what have you to optimize for mobile? What we do is we provide a number of guidelines. We really do our best to make sure that Flash content on a mobile device works the same on a desktop. We've provided some guidelines and some, some best practices, some sample code to developers so they can take advantage of the capabilities on a device like touch events. Okay. So what's Fat Slice? Because there's a pizza place in Berkeley called Fat Slice. Uh, and it's almost lunchtime, so I'm a little distracted by that. <laughs> okay. So this is a another casual game. And so the goal is to slice off little pieces before the bouncing ball comes in contact with the line. Pretty interesting little game, and you can <laughs> advance up to the... That's cool. I like that game. Actually, I haven't seen that. Oh. Gotcha. It's kind of the, the inverse. There's this old arcade game called uh, Quicks. Oh, yes, yeah. very it's much like so. kind of an inverse of Quicks. Correct. If you want this to... is why I, I hang out with the PR guys because they're closer to my age than all you watching at home, you youngins. So they understand the old school arcade references. Quicks is good. There's another good demo over here if you want to jump over. So this is a site called EcoZoo. I'm Danny Winokur, by the way, from Adobe. And this site, EcoZoo, is an environmental site that helps to educate people about environmental practices. And you can see that they've done a really beautiful job of creating an immersive, rich, and very graphical experience in Flash that gives you sort of a children's pop-up book-like experience to help oh, educate cool. you okay. about the environment. And so you can see it gives you this very beautiful and, yeah. and rich experience that you can then navigate in Flash 
but you know, full support for touch events. Um, it actually, if you're watching this, you know, later after the video has been edited and uploaded to the web, hopefully it's coming through. It's a really nice kind of 3D-esque experience with the video. It's, it's or I should say, with the uh, the multimedia content. I think it's, it's key too that this was uh, not created for a device. This is we, you know found on the web. Right. Yeah, it was a full desktop site. Right. 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 So right. the you know one of the key value propositions in the upgrade to 10.1 is it basically takes the full richness of desktop Flash Player 10 that has been available and puts it in your that, pocket. And so that's the question I was going to ask the difference between this and something like uh, Flash Lite that's available on some devices now. Yeah, so the, the, the difference there is that with 10.1, as I was just saying, you get the full richness of everything that can be done with Flash Player 10 on the desktop, but the ability to put it in your pocket and take it mobile. Um, with Flash Lite, you have support for still a good browsing experience that is really intended for more limited capability devices that aren't going to be able to run the right. full desktop yeah. experience because of their own constraints. Now, that doesn't mean Hulu is going to let you watch, but that's on Hulu. That's not a Yeah, that's license that's issues. That's not technology. But yeah. so this will support uh, Flash video as well. Oh, absolutely. And I can show you a site, assuming we keep our... Oh, you've got one going. There you go. So this is a Warner Brothers site where they're showing a number of trailers. One of the challenges we're having in this hotel room is just getting the network. Yeah, no, absolutely. But there you go. No. So well, if all those darn bloggers would turn their Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> wrong event. Sorry. Uh, Cues up. Begins. It begins to play. I'll turn up the volume a little bit. No, will this do? I know this device has HDMI out. Okay, will it show Flash content via HDMI? Out? Do you know? I know that you're not Motorola or Adobe, so. It, might not be a question for you guys. I don't either. Okay, we'll try to find out. Yeah. That's a quick example of Flash Video. Very cool. All right. So there you go. It's a sneak preview again. Uh, the full Flash Player experience is going to be 10.1. So Flash Player 10.1 will be coming uh, to Froyo devices, uh, Android 2.2, later this summer. Um, and specifically to the Droid X, which is what we're looking about. I don't want to speak to other compatibility because we're talking about Droid X right now. So the device won't ship with Froyo. It won't ship with Flash Player, but it will be available, they're saying, late summer. So there you go. Very cool stuff from the folks at Adobe. Uh, again, I'm at the launch event for the Droid X. Motorola, Google, Verizon, of course, and Adobe all in the house uh, talking about their new multimedia beast. Much, much more on the Droid X. Everything on Android, everything on Flash on Android, and uh, you know, if it ever comes to other platforms, I'm not going to say who, you know what I'm talking about, on phonehug.com. Until next time, I'm Noah, thanks for watching.